This episode of the Nerf Herder Council is brought to you by Audible. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. I'm Kevin Thompson. I'm Chub Ray from Return of the Jedi. You're listening to the Nerf Herder Council. Why, you stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking Nerf Herder! You can't use that word! Only we can use that word! You're tuned in to the Nerf Herder Council, your source for Star Wars opinion, conversation, and debate. Featuring your hosts, JT. Stormtrooper armor deflects everything except Orbach hooves. <laughs> they kind of they're like a horse version of Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> AJ. Yeah, Rebels. Rebels is a lot like our show, where we think we have a good idea and then it just fails in execution. <laughs> Steve. The vacuum of space does crazy things to your bee hole out there, man. <laughs> Happy Star Wars Podcast Day! On this episode, we discuss Raylos, Rancors, and relationships, and everything in between. Get ready, shippers! This episode is for you. This is the Nerf Herder Council. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. I am your host, JT. With me is my brother, AJ, my co-host for the night. Steve is out sick, so he is uh, feeling under the weather, and he will not be making it to the show tonight. So uh, we'll be flying. Well, I guess it's not really solo if there's two of us, is there? (laughs) So we're like in a biplane. One of us is the gunner. So I guess... was two weeks ago that's for sure yeah, <laughs> yeah right i think i'm the gunner because i'm getting all kinds of popping and stuff on my audio and i have no idea why i cannot figure that out i bought a brand new setup and popping away like popcorn so you know i'm the gunner tonight audio techs want to help us out with that please chime in yeah i'm a when i say i'm a complete moron with tech i am not kidding and this is garbage <laughs> I've been Googling and YouTube and like crazy for about three weeks now. I can't figure it out. So um, anyways, as usual, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. Uh, you can also get your free cust- – er, free. Look at me. Uh, you can get your customizable Nerf Herder Console swag at shop.nerfherdercouncil.com. So go check that out. Um, one of the things that uh, – we wanted to talk about tonight is uh, a topic that is pretty controversial within the star Wars universe. Um, I know that uh, I've been attacked about it on Twitter before and uh, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of one of those things you're either on one side of the fence or the other. And if you try to, if you try to get in the, if you try to stay in the middle, uh, it doesn't go too well for you. So um, we wanted to talk about shipping in the star Wars universe, considering, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up and you know it's 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 a holiday of love so we wanted to kind of go through some of our favorite relationships in Star Wars and I, I didn't uh, prepare properly I thought this was going to involve the taxation of trade routes um, <laughs> UPS in space <laughs> right uh, yeah so I mean I, I mean there, there's a lot of obvious relationships and stuff like that in Star Wars and we want to you know go through some of our favorites but AJ, you kind of wanted to have me come into this kind of flying a little bit blind. So you've got some stuff prepared that you want to present and see my reaction, have a discussion about this. So uh, why don't you lead it off and uh, you know kind of set us on our path here? Well, I wanted to start and see with regards to shipping like Raylos, for example. I, you and I, unfortunately, this is going to be a lopsided conversation. We were trying to get some alternate voices in here, but... Um, You know, we never saw or wanted Raylo in our Star Wars. And it's weird to look at like the other side of that coin and try to figure out like, why do people want that? Like that's shipping in general is like such a phenomenon lately, right? It's it's just part of the Twitter culture where people are in all kinds of 
relationships and bonding and stuff. And dude, I'll tell you what, I wish you could have gotten Google drive working because, uh, <laughs> you know, to, I grabbed all these images and the weird shit that I found just by like putting in two star war characters names, like dude, people got way too much time and way too much talent. <laughs> 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 I only put the official images in there, but there was so much stuff like all over Pinterest and stuff like that. Like I could have, I could have just hammered you with all kinds of stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, like, I d- so the Raylo thing, like, did you see that coming at all? Did you feel, ever get like a vibe between the two of them? Like that was their dynamic. I personally didn't. Um, I was I was really surprised when that became an absolutely massive thing. Uh, I I didn't see that at all. Uh, it kind of seemed like a enemies who could be friends type of thing. That's that's kind of how I read it. But I never saw the whole well they should hook up and have babies and you know that 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 sort of uh, you know I just never got that vibe. Do you think it was? one of these last Jedi problems where if eight had set it up better than nine, it would have paid off. Um, I, I can't, I can't really say that. Um, I just never saw it. So, you know, that's why I, when, you know, when, when they kissed at the end of the move end of, end of the movie, um, or end of the, end of the uh, sequel trilogy, I should say, I, I wasn't one of those people that was like, Okay, yeah, I saw that coming. I was kind of like, "Oh, okay, I guess, I guess that I guess that's a thing. They're hooking up, or they wanted to hook up, or something like that." So I was kind of surprised by that. Um, it was it was interesting to me. It and blue, and I think that's why I have a hard time with it too. Well, I think it came out of the blue for us because we weren't in the crowd that was thinking the whole time, "Oh, they got all this sexual chemistry. You could totally tell they're into each other, like boyfriend and girlfriend." And I, because you and I never really looked at it that way, it, it came out of the blue for us. But I think that for people that were kind of seeing that and or hoping for it the whole time, you know, that, I think that's where this whole thing comes from. Because a lot of the, and maybe I'm I'm reaching here, but uh, you know, a lot of the people that were really pissed off about it online that were supporters of it were, well, that's not how I thought it was going to go when he died. So. You know, I w- and, and really that's, I mean, I, I got attacked a lot by, by people, you know, I asked questions about it and because I wasn't immediately, oh yeah, like, yeah, I'm totally, you know, I, I'm totally for it. Um, I, I got, I got really jumped a couple times online and I was like, whoa, man, I'm just asking a question about it because I, I don't know anything about it. I'm ignorant to it. So, you know, it was, it was definitely an interesting experience. I was definitely cyber bullied for a bit. You know, I I compare it to um, Jin and Cassian from Rogue One, where, you know, the end of that movie, I never it never seemed like they were trying to hook up or had vibes either. But when you know, they were dying, and they they hugged. That was like I think the writers even said that was like equivalent of boning as far as they were concerned. <laughs> Definitely not, um, not platonic, but the hug was enough, you know, just sitting there yeah. to get to the end. Yeah. And I didn't have a problem with that at all. Like that, that didn't turn me off. It didn't seem like out of place, but the Raylo turn totally did for some reason. And I'm just wondering like where that difference in dynamic comes from. I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't. It's, it was, a, it's a weird thing for me because, you know, a lot of people have said, Oh, well, Han and Leia hooked up. You know, you didn't have a problem with that, and it's it's just the same. And I was like, no, it really wasn't. Han Solo walked around for three movies, being like, yeah, I want to hook up with Princess Leia. So, <laughs> you know, that it and it wasn't like that with Ray and and Kylo Ren. So, I, I'm I'm not really sure how that changed. So, it's almost like a dramatic thing where if we had more background on on storytelling and creative writing and stuff maybe we could dig into this because i feel like there's something wrong with how it was told like if we had gotten to that point in a in a more satisfying way like like padme and anakin people say like that was horrible those two had no chemistry and it's such a pivotal 
part of the prequel trilogy. Yeah. And the same thing. Like we knew the story going in. As soon as we saw Amidala, we're like, okay, great. Those two are going to hook up. And yeah. yet it sucked when they did. Like it didn't, it wasn't plausible at all. Like you didn't yeah. buy it. And I felt like the Rayla thing was kind of like the same way where you're like, what, really? Like, no, no, that doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think, I think it could have, but I, but I, I just don't, I, I didn't really get into the whole, well, we're enemies. We're going to hook up thing. I, that's, if that was what they were going to do, I, I didn't think that that was very cool because it softens up the, the villain a little too much. I think, um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I guess you could compare it to Vader's redemption where, oh yeah, I turned back to the back, back to the life because of my son, you know? And I, so I, I mean, I guess that is similar, but I don't know something about it. You know, Kylo Ren wanting to rule the galaxy and then he kind of gives it up, you know, and it, hypothetically, if this is what people were looking for, you know, gives it up for the love of a woman. It's like, I, it's just, I, I don't know how, how if that really fits into star wars and I, I i mean there's a lot of people that think so i just it it just I'm feels it's weird vader's entire thing vader's entire thing was he did all that horrible shit just to try to save padme yeah it wouldn't be the first time in star wars but yeah it sure would be a yeah. weird kylo yeah that he's on the dark path with no thought of getting laid in mind yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, it's just something, and again, you know, like you brought up the dynamic and stuff, and, and you mentioned, you know, Padme and uh, Anakin, and that being, you know, a little obvious and kind of bleh, and I, I think I think that's it has a lot to do with the dialogue. Um, you know, people say there's no chemistry between the actors, but I, I, I if the, if, the, if what you're working with dialogue-wise is utter garbage, you know, that, you know, the scene in the living room or whatever in uh you know attack of the clones is like, i can't breathe you're just like Ugh. i mean it's it's kind of when you're trying not to make the words you're saying cringeworthy mm-hmm. because they're so cringeworthy it's hard to really interact because you're just trying to not have word barf fall out of your mouth <laughs> you know, so yeah exactly yeah man that's 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 a rough one and then you get the opposite with ray and kylo where there's like no dialogue between them besides stuff like in last Jedi where she's like, do you have a cowl or something you can put on? Like, I don't, yeah. don't want to like, yeah. So well, maybe she's a lot and bothered. I mean, they did touch hands with the force after that. So. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, was it ever really explained why Ray acted the way she did at the end of episode nine? Uh, they're connected by the force, but was Ben solo ever quote unquote good before that? That's from our good buddy, Joe Wren. Um, I I think they I think they kind of get into some more details about that, um, in the novelization. Not a lot, but it, it does explain it a little bit more. Uh, I I didn't read it because I'm not a fan of the movie novelizations, and I also heard that the one for Episode Nine was not very good. Um, so it's in there, but uh, not. Not really. Again, they, they never really acted that way before. So you know, having such a small following, I can actually offer this explanation. Um, he's a dude. Uh, he was a bad boy. And women like to change men. So she was probably just getting at it because she could. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. And the reason Ben was going for it was because he's a dude and he'll hit it if he can. <laughs> Especially if he checked out anyway, he's like, I might as well get some before I die. It's it's sad. It, it's sad that that he would have got that, bored with a week, but he's like, I'm out of here anyway. Might as well. You know, it'd be hilarious if that if that really was. They wanted to have like the most like stock like male female relationship 101 thing in their movie, and just try and like veil it under you know the guise of it's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it's bored Ben Solo. And yeah. <laughs> that was that was episode ten, the falling out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what you started, right? <laughs> yeah. Joe Ren says AJ wins the internet this time. <laughs> 
Yeah, I I don't know. Like, all right, so Rural Farm Boy says Raylo is in relation to fans that have romantic expectations. It's not how Star Wars stories are told. And I, I always kind of struggle with that, again, because, you know, the whole Han and Leia thing, you can have that in Star Wars. I think, I just kind of think, and maybe it was never fully explained to me, but from some of the threads that I've read on the various social media platforms about the whole Raylo concept, I think people, you know, and I'm just, I'm using this term sparingly and vaguely. I'm not, you know, saying this is exactly what they wanted. I'm just trying to make an analogy here, but they were kind of turning it into twilight in their, in their heads, you know, like teeny bopper fan fiction type of stuff. And it, it just, it, it, it wouldn't have fit. And then the argument was, well, you know, things change and, Star Wars isn't just for, you know, mid 40s guys, you know, like me and you, AJ and stuff. It's it's for everybody. And I'm thinking, yeah, but that's very true. But I just think that's so far outside of the realm of what people, you know, are used to and expect from a Star Wars movie that it would just be it would just seem like it was crammed in there like a sore thumb. Yeah, I think they were they were pulling in two different directions with episode nine anyway. Like as soon as you introduce the force dyad, then you imply that there's this like super special deep connection between them. I don't think you need to pile romance on top of that. In fact, I think it gets weird at that point then like, yeah. Oh, they're connected through the force and they're in love. Really? Yeah. Like, like it That's- was cool. It's just like, Oh, these are two halves of a whole and yeah. not in a romantic sense. They just complete each other in a, in a bond through the force alone. Yeah. And I, I think in, in terms, in terms of a star Wars thing, that's stronger than a whole, okay, well, I love you, you know, romantically type of thing. It's, you know, cause you've had that before, but you've never had a force dyad. So it would, you know, like you said, it would it'd be too much. It would kind of take away from, take away from the story a little bit. I, man, I got to quit drinking pop on the show. Yeah. And as much <laughs> as you like, Sorry. Vader, there, there is one detracting point in the whole, I did it for Padme thing. And it's, Man, you did a lot of horrible shit for Padme. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't care. I love someone. I'm not going to go and slaughter a whole bunch of kids. I'm not going to enslave the galaxy. Like, damn, dude. <laughs> really took that overboard. <laughs> I know like, it'll I know what a winner back. <laughs> right? <laughs> but baby, I slaughtered like 20 younglings for you. <laughs> I I toppled the entire Jedi order for you. <laughs> this was all what, for you, man. What you wanted? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, um, yeah. I, like I said, the Raylo thing is interesting. Um, just it's it's really not my cup of tea. I, I don't have a problem with people. You know, if people want to do that sort of thing, you know, I, I honestly, I honestly, like the biggest problem I had was the way people treated each other over it. <laughs> I mean, attacking people for not getting into it and thinking that that's that's what should have happened it's like well okay that's what you think should have happened you know mm-hmm. i personally think that every single star wars movie should have just been han solo flying around the millennium falcon kicking everyone's ass for two and a half hours but i didn't get that and i wouldn't fault other people for saying well that's really not what i want from star wars so well he wouldn't been on star killer bridge to get stabbed by his son then so that would have been a good move all right let's take aj out of the show and go solo here for a minute okay AJ will be back in when he can uh, learn to show some respect. All right. You're out of jail now. Are you going to behave yourself? Are you um, behave? Well, I do have one more nugget about Han Solo to drop just in case if you want to talk <laughs> about fanfic and what people are inventing in their heads. Um, <laughs> sure. Steve was going to point out your Han Solo Lives t-shirt, which is essentially fanfic. So that makes Han and life kind of like a shipping experience, wouldn't you think? No, it's just a cool shirt. It's funny. It's it's an I it's an I'm in denial as a joke t shirt. I should you know, I gotta wear that on the next show. I haven't busted that one out in a while. <laughs> can we just add like with a paint marker, can we add a colon and the number zero? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so awesome. Like, Joseph Friend, I could have killed your grandpa the emperor so easy, but I didn't. I didn't do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man. 
No, All it's right. so, it's just weird because, like like you said, love stories have been in Star Wars from the very beginning, but some of them just fall flat, and the other one, and some don't. Yeah, like it's... the weirdest thing for me, one of the weirdest things I realized after watching Solo for like the three hundred twenty seventh time was <laughs> I really like Han with Kira better than with Leia. You know what? It's funny. I do too. I, it's weird I, I because don't... that's like the classic pairing is Han and Leia. And in fact, yeah. in, in my clicking around to, to gather images that we're not even using tonight, um, there was an article on StarWars.com that one of the pictures came from said why Han and Leia are perfect for each other. Yeah. And I just – I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> they're not. I, I See, I can see the argument, I guess, and maybe it's because we're used to that. But something about the whole Han and, and you know what I really think it is with the Han and Kira thing is that when when we pick up their story, it's like we 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 catch them almost as like I mean you know they're they're like teenagers basically, so it's that innocence of youth and you know they're so glued glued to each other at the hip and everything like that. So you kind of get into it at the ground floor, and they 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 had the same upbringing. They were they were trying to get out of that hard scrabble life and all this sort of stuff. Whereas, you know, the, the Han and Leia, like she was a princess and, you know, running, you know, the rebellion and he was just piece of garbage flying around smuggling stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it was okay. It was all right. You know, for them to hook up is like the lady in the tramp type of a thing, (laughs) you know, except, you know, they're not cute cartoon dogs. Um, But, (laughs) but yeah, something about that Han and Kira thing just really connected with me like immediately. So I completely agree with you that. Yeah, that that I I do actually have some semblance of emotion, believe it or not. And uh, <laughs> like like you said, the whole story of like they they grew up together, they fought and scrabbled their way out of Corellia, but she didn't get out to be reunited like years later and have a chance to make a clean go of things was like it's still to this day. Like you know how you watch episode three and you still believe that there's a chance that Anakin won't turn. Yeah. Every time I watch solo, I still think there's a chance that Kira won't betray Han to Maul. Yeah. And, or for Maul rather. Yeah. Like, just, just don't man, just go off. And I want to see you two having adventures together. That's- yeah. The, the look on her face when the door shuts on, on the, on uh Dryden Voss's ship and mm-hmm. Han's like, okay, I'll meet you down there or whatever. After they kill Dryden and stuff. And she's just sitting there staring at the door. Like that look on her face, like, Oh God, you know, this sucks and I can't do anything about it. That that's just heartbreaking. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, in that moment that they first reconnect on Dryden's ship as well after the the um the snow job goes bad on the uh, with the train and the coaxium. Yeah. Um like that conveyance. smile that she gives him, like who wouldn't live to have someone smile at them like she smiles at Han <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> right. Like, right? Damn, man, it gets me every time. Like, I want to be that guy in that moment. I want someone to look at me that way. Yeah. And, like, Leia's great, but she never quite did that. No. I mean, really, the closest you got was maybe a little bit, you know, at the end of Empire when, you know, he was going into the carbonite. Um, Mm -hmm. And then there's the, you know, when she gets shot at the bunker on Endor's, I love you, I know. Like, okay, you had those couple moments, but... They never really showed you that, you know, really heartfelt, you know, that they're together. They're meant to be together. This is a thing like it was it was more implied that stuff like might have happened off the screen that we didn't see. And then, of course, when, you know, we see them again in The Force Awakens, then, you know, all the, you know, 30 years have passed. And they've already had a kid and they've, you know, split up and they're kind of back to their old ways, you know, their old lives and everything. Um, <laughs> Rural Farm Boy says, me, I love the story of Anakin slash Prime. I'm an OG face. It's Prime, autocorrect. I mean, Padme. <laughs> so, so uh, Rural Farm Boy is shipping uh, Anakin Skywalker with Optimus Prime. So that is definitely one we did not think of. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> could be Amazon Prime. Oh yeah. I mean, two day shipping yeah. all the way to Coruscant from the Outer Rim is pretty sweet. <laughs> well, well, they they don't go out there because well, no, they could go to Coruscant, but not Naboo because there's all the taxation there, and and Prime has free shipping. So, you know, 
So, I don't know about okay. you, but I love going to the outer rim. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. So I'm going to agree with you that, that Han and Kira, I think is, is probably my favorite. Uh, it, it's probably, yeah, it's probably my favorite. I would say of, of the relationships. Um, so there's obviously the Han and Leia. Uh, what, what other you know, ones do you have? Like, well, I think I just I think I just figured something out. The reason I I think I like the Kira pairing with Han better than Leia. Return of the Jedi is my favorite movie, but when it comes to their relationship in that movie, he's such a friggin' pushover. Like he he he's domesticated by that point, right? Like when when Han and Kira are hooking up. And they're they're vibing in solo. He's still being the scoundrel and doing all the dangerous action stuff that we love about Han. And then when it gets to Return of the Jedi, he's kind of a he's kind of a dullard, really. Like, <laughs> dullard, you know, nice. she's all ups, she's all upset after Luke goes storming off, and and he still thinks that it's because like they're in love and they had a spat or something. And he's like, I won't yeah. get in the way, like. Can you not read the friggin' room, dude? She already <laughs> kissed you and said I love you and then rescued you from Jabba's palace. Like, how do you not get this? She's just a really good pal. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Man, I Yeah, it's Yeah, I identify myself as someone who loves you every time I go to see a friend, too. <laughs> right. I love how you break it all down like that. Like, you know, all the, the list of different things she did, and he's like, I get it. You don't dig me, you know? She's just not that into me. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, he's getting all pissed. Like, could you tell Luke? Could you tell Luke? Is that who you could tell? Well, <laughs> yeah. So what? No, I don't like, need I, to. I, he, I won't get in the way. Like, she yeah. kissed you, dude. She's kissing you right now. And you're like, what? Like, <laughs> does she have to mount you in front of all of the Ewok village or something before you get the hint? Like, give him a lap dance. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, she, she's like, what, Luke, is that who you could tell? No, actually, he doesn't have to. Uh, we have the force. Yeah. What the hell's going on here? What? <laughs> What's under that Ewok dress? You want to show me? Then I'll find out. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Joe, Joe says, talking about relationships, what about the bromance? Finn and Poe, Han and Chewie, Yoda and the force. <laughs> Yoda has a bromance with the force. Nice. Um, Dude, I'm glad you brought this up. I'm glad you brought this up, Joseph, because, yeah, we had a whole list of stuff, but without the pictures, I'm kind of at a loss for all the ones I came up with. <laughs> but the sequel trilogy in general is, like, full of shipper delight, right? Yeah. I mean – So the, you had me pull up pictures of, of like, the love triangle. Yeah. Uh, who did you – let's let's look at it this way. From episode seven, if anyone was going to hook up with Ray, who did you think it was going to be? Finn. Okay, Why? Well, I mean, he he was acting like he was into her, you know, right off the rip. You know, you got he says you got a boyfriend, cute boyfriend, none of your business. I mean, so he's already asking about a boyfriend, you know, half hour after meeting her. So well, yeah, he's interested, of course. He's a dude. What about her? <laughs> uh, Uncar Plut. <laughs> Oh my um, god. <laughs> All the visuals on that. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She ru- she runs off with Finn and he's trailing behind. Hey, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he gets dumped by Ray. Um, oh god. Hey, what's, what's up? What's worse visual? Uncar Plut hooking up with Ray or Simon Pegg hooking up with Ray? Simon Pegg is a piece of Star Wars filth, so uh he would be worse. It's really hard not to swear a lot when when you bring that guy up, man. <laughs> right? I can't stand that guy. Any anybody who tells me that if I like the prequels that I'm a piece of shit and that I'm not a true Star Wars fan, I'm like, you know what? I hope you get in a fiery bus accident, but escape with only minor nagging injuries and just a lot of fear. I don't wish anything actually bad to happen, but I would like him to have the piss scared out of him severely. Because that's you a wonder, doucher thing to, to say. And you wonder why our special guest didn't want to come on tonight for her Raylo opinion. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> that's but- the kind of fandom. Is she's like, I don't want to get attacked by you or the fandom. I'm like, well, can't really blame you there because it will happen. 
Well, okay. I, we did. You're, you're wishing a bus crash on someone for saying you shouldn't like the movies that you like. <laughs> what? But no, don't call me. Don't say I'm not a fan. You you don't like the prequels. That's great. So somebody else does that. They're not a true Star Wars fan. I'd like to sit that guy down and have a Star Wars trivia competition. Little turd. Little fake Scotty. Star Trek idiot with a stupid zombie movie that wasn't funny. Uh, ugh. Yeah, you want to talk about a real fan? Let's go play some Star Wars Trivial Pursuit, Simon Pegg. I'm throwing down the gauntlet right now. I will smoke your ass at Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. Call me not a fan. And you know what? You know why I would smoke him? Because Star Wars Trivial Pursuit has prequel questions in it, so he wouldn't be able to answer them, so he'd be screwed. It'd be easy. What a joke. Anyway, so, yeah, so the love triangle, you were saying, who, uh, who would Ray have hooked up with? I I was thinking it was going to be Poe actually. Because like I don't know, I feel like Finn got friend zoned in a hurry. Yeah, now that I did feel. The Poe thing I didn't really get that vibe only because I thought it would have been such a uh, Han and Leia rip off that I thought it was it was a little too obvious. You know, it would have been real easy to go, hey, you know, let's do the Han and Leia thing again. You know, I mean, they, they did a lot of things over again in that movie, but I think that was one of the ones that they avoided and purposely. Um, one of the other reasons that the Poe thing really wouldn't have worked, I tried remembering this tonight, and again, I'm doing this from memory on purpose, but they didn't meet face to face until the end of Last Jedi, didn't they? Like, I don't think they met in Force Awakens. No, it's it's in the last Jedi because members and the Falcon. She he's weird, he's, right? Like there's three yeah. main characters of the sequel, three main heroes of the sequel trilogy, and two of them don't even meet until the last scene yeah. of the second movie. And you have to kind of think of it for a second too, because you don't really realize it. You you're kind of like, oh yeah, and you know they they say the line, you know, you know he's like I'm Poe, she says I'm Ray, he's like I know. Yeah. So, you know, which, it's like it's like I, I everyone it assumes cool. that Luke and Leia and Han were all and Chewie were all together like so much in the original trilogy. Yeah, and that was rarely the case. Boy, sequel trilogy outdid that by a mile. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, well, OK, the original four were in the original trilogy a lot more because if you think about it, it's like a whole, you know, a big a big portion of episode four. Then they're all kind of, you know, at least Luke is split up from them in Empire. And then, you know, they're kind of all back together again in Jedi. So at least you had that. But, you know, I mean, like, like you said, like the, the, the main characters in the sequel trilogy really weren't. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the things that I really liked about The Rise of Skywalker was seeing them actually, you know, on an adventure together. Because you're like, oh, this is cool. It's kind of like bringing the pieces together. You know, but... um. So yeah, they were I, always I like in it. each other's orbit, but they weren't ever like directly together. Yeah, I think maybe that's one of the hardest things about believing any of the shipping that people want to imagine is that there was never any indication of chemistry because they didn't share that much screen time together. Yeah, like Finn and Ray would be the closest thing, or or Finn and Poe. <laughs> like, yeah, Ray hooking up with Poe is a long shot because they they spent almost no time together, and all they did was not get along in Episode Nine for the most part. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I thought it was going to lead to like, you know, he was, he was the aloof guy. So I thought he might like connect with her in some way, but Finn, I don't know. I, I feel like that whole trilogy, like they didn't really know who was going to hook up, but somebody was going to hook up. So they just kind of like seeded all of those little things throughout. You I mean, don't know. I would have been cool with Finn and Poe actually. That, that was kind of a big deal too. Uh, online. People were talking a lot about that. And I was like, man, that'd be interesting. I, All it takes is one little lip bite, man. Yeah. As yeah. soon as he's like, "Keep the jacket," it looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yeah. I. I just that. It's 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 so weird because that was always so hard to talk about because if you just have a discussion about it, if you don't immediately go, "Yeah, that's awesome," then you know the world of social media eats you alive for that. And you know I. I would have had no feeling about it. Like, all right, cool. You know, they got an actual like major gay couple in star Wars. Like that is original. It's a new thing. Hey, you know, it's, that's fine. You know, Mm -hmm. to me, I wouldn't, I think honestly, I wouldn't have even noticed. I would have just been like, okay, they're two, you know, 
members of the resistance trying to destroy the first order. Like I wouldn't be looking at them because they hooked up. It's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it would have been interesting because it was different. It was something that had never been done before. Um, but I honestly think I really wouldn't have noticed it because I was my mindset, you know, like I've always said, when I see a Star Wars movie for the first time, I'm like, ooh, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. And it takes me a couple of viewings to get out of that head headspace. But I'm still in that Star Wars universe where I'm seeing, you know, TIE fighters and X-Wings and lightsabers and the Force. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not seeing people hooking up. I'm not looking for that. And it doesn't really bother me. And I don't, you know, if it's if it's new, if it's fresh, if it's different, like I'm just like, okay. Like when's the next lightsaber yeah. battle? So like I, I really don't care. You I'm know, surprised so. we haven't gotten that yet because the books and the comics are really good at being inclusive like that. So to not having seen having seen it on screen yet is really weird. I think. Well, and and, and some people were complaining because you actually had the first gay couple in Star Wars, and it was on Resistance, the cartoon. Mm-hmm. And some people were saying, "Well, you know, wasn't that's it more the than- shopkeepers too? There was like yeah. a couple of aliens." Yeah. And, you know, people were saying, well, that's more of a show for kids. That's, you know, not the place to do it. And then other people were saying, well, it's not a big enough platform. They should have done it in a movie. So I think the unfortunate thing is that you can't, there's no way that you can please everybody. So, like, you have to put it somewhere. And I think the best thing they can do is to just stay as close to the vest as possible with what people expect from Star Wars. And in a way they kind of have to because it you know they're going to make like a billion dollars every time they put out a movie. If they start trying to cram things in that could be potentially divisive to a certain segment of the fan base, um you know that you know people that have biases, you could do some pretty serious damage and Disney is a business and they don't want to do damage. They want to play it safe. So uh, you know, I think a lot of these things, like you know, the Finn and the the Finn and Poe thing, and you know, the, putting the you know, the the first gay couple is a couple of sh- little shop cartoon shopkeepers in a kids cartoon, like they all, you know, they don't have to do it that way, but that is the business decision. Man, I hope that's not the case. If they if they punted on making that kind of a statement because they thought it might hurt their bottom line, that's really shallow. That would really suck. I mean, it's, I know Star Trek is more progressive, but they've they've broken so many social barriers. Like they had they had a lesbian kiss in the '90s on on syndicated television. Hell, they had the first interracial kiss back in the 1960s. So you know the fact that they've got an openly gay couple on their current show is just par for the course. Hell, they've got a they've got a non-binary couple actually, and I think they've got a really? transgender character too. Yeah, like they've got they're covering all the bases. So I think for Star Wars to show a uh, a male gay couple is really not a big deal at this point. I I don't think it is, but I mean, you know, it was, I mean, hell dude, it was a big deal um, on Disney plus where they had those animated shorts and they've got one about, you know, the gay guy trying to, whereas his his dog kind of like helps him tell his parents that he's actually gay. Like he comes out of the, he's all nervous about coming out of the closet to his, to his parents I didn't see and, that one. Yeah, I, I forget what it's called. I mean, it's really, really good. Um, but you know, again, instead of doing that on a major platform, they do it in an animated short amidst a pile of other animated shorts. And you know, with with a with a company that big, I, I'm with you. I, I I think it'd be cool if they took chances. Um, you know, because they are big enough to take the hit. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I I could see both sides of the coin. You know, on, on one hand, you want to you know play the straight and narrow and not really ruffle too many feathers. But then, on the other hand, if you're making you know billions upon billions of dollars, if you lose a half billion to some people that are just biased and they want to stay like in this tight little you know square of what is considered normal, uh, who cares? I mean, you can afford to take that hit, and. I think take, I think they would have support from the fan base for it at this point. You could just take a look at Marvel. I mean, yeah, Black Panther. Black Panther did gangbusters. It, I think as a movie, it was okay. It's in the middle of the MCU pack for me, but me it did huge numbers because it was a black superhero. And they leaned into that. The fact yeah. that it was a black culture piece was was a real like milestone. 
and the the scene in Avengers Endgame when all the female heroes assemble. Yeah, people lost their minds for that. Yep, and they it was total fan service and pandering, and people loved it because it was. Like yeah. sometimes it is okay to call attention to these things. And be like, yes, this is what we stand for. Yeah, I think they and, would have had much more support for the act than backlash. Yeah, and I, you know, I I I, I agree with you one hundred percent on that because you know the the way the world is anymore, that stuff exists everywhere, and so mm-hmm. it's not. It, it's it's kind of it's kind of the norm to, to put that stuff into pop culture. I mean, if you look at, again, got to quit drinking pop on the show. Good Lord. Um, uh, whiskey in it. It smooths it out. <laughs> I do not have any. Um, yeah. But I mean, if you, I mean, if you look at commercials and stuff like that and just everyday ads and whatnot, you're seeing constantly, it's, you've always got way more people of color than before. Um, you know, there, there's always like different nationalities and stuff. There's a lot more, um, you know, uh, same sex couples and whatnot. I, I mean, it's it's a, it, it's just how things work. I mean, it's it's kind of the norm mm-hmm. in a way. Um, so, and again, I, I I if they did it, I don't think I would notice because I I don't have biases like that, and I think I'm used to seeing it. So, um. You know, yeah. maybe on that on that basis, I think the way they've kind of slid it in to just the rest of their storytelling without drawing attention to it, maybe that is the better way to go. Because, like you said, it's a normal part of society. So putting it in without calling attention to it makes it feel normal and ordinary. Yeah. So, okay, so you have a couple of gay shopkeepers. Big deal. You have uh, yeah. you know, an animated short and a pile of other animated shorts about – uh, a boy coming out to his parents about being gay. Yeah. That's actually the, yes, it's big stuff, but you're right. It kind of, it, it panders and kind of cheapens it. If you draw attention to it, like, Hey, look at us. We're so progressive. Instead of just going, yeah, yeah it's a thing. We put it in there. Cause it's normal. Yeah. Like, I do like that approach better. I just wonder, we don't have the, the point of view of someone who's actually like in that community to understand how they feel about it. Maybe yeah. they would feel differently. Maybe they would like to have some attention put on the issue for a change. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure they would. I mean, it's it's a segment of the fan base that hasn't really been recognized at all. So it's kind of like you know, I mean, there's always characters that you can relate to, and they don't have that per se. I mean, they may have like you know the adventurous. Oh, I you know I want to I want to go off on a quest like Luke Skywalker and stuff like that. I mean, you could you could do that, but in, in mm-hmm. terms of you know like uh, like a same sex couple or whatever, like we were talking about, like. That isn't represented for them there. So they can't be like, oh, yeah, I can relate to that. You know, there's, you know, that's kind of something that is, you know, close to my heart it, and it doesn't exist. So, you know, it's it, it's an interesting topic to me because I and I, I have to say, like, I'm glad we're talking about it because I think that's the one thing that you, when you try and talk about these things in the fandom, especially, I mean, I know it's social media and that's just a cesspool of, you know, hatred and, you know, but people won't, you know, they're kind of hesitant to tread into these waters because it is a little bit of a, like, like we said, it's a controversial topic. And I think if you don't have the ability to actually explain yourself and, and converse about it, it can, you know, I, it can come off sounding kind of, you know, I mean, if, like if I just tweeted out right now, like, yeah, if they had Finn and Poe hook up in Star Wars, you know, I probably wouldn't even notice. I would probably get crucified. Mm-hmm. But with a long form explanation, it's like, oh, yeah. So, you know, I think it'd be interesting for them to bring it in because it would foster these types of conversations. And I, I, I think that's a good thing. You know, obviously we like talking Star Wars. We have a damn podcast about it, you know, with a crappy sounding mm-hmm. popping mic on my end. So, <laughs> so, all right, so what yeah, are you right? I like, I like when they use the platform to address things and, you know, be yeah. brave about it because they, they are in a position of influence. Yep. So I think a lot of people that might otherwise be averse to talking about these things. I mean, that's, that's kind of what. I know it's more of a fantasy than a sci-fi, but that's a lot of what this whole genre is about is like, if you tweak things just far enough away from reality, you can talk about real stuff and it's not nearly as threatening, you know? So like if someone's really like at least somewhat homophobic, 
and then a galaxy far, far away has gay characters, maybe I can pay attention to it a little bit more because it's not reality. Yeah, no, I actually I th- I think that's that's beautifully said. I I could not agree more because it makes it acceptable. It's not you're not being confronted with something that may be difficult for you to talk about or to interact with, you know, conceptually. You're not just being smacked in the head with it bluntly. It's you're kind of being eased into it. You know, it's like, you know, going to sleep on a soft pillow, you know, you're not just smashing your head down onto the bedboard, you know, <laughs> like, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, 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 I could not agree more. You phrased that perfectly, man. That was very, very well said. I mean, um, that's kind of, that's what star Wars did from the start, right? The empire was basically George Lucas expressing his anti-fascist beliefs. Yeah. And talking about the dangers of big government and, you know, handing over power willingly and all that kind of stuff. That was the entire allegory of the prequels. Yeah. So you can say a lot of stuff if you just clothe it properly. You yeah. Know? Rural farm boy agrees with me. He says, well said. I could not agree more. That That is perfect phrasing on your part. That may be the smartest thing anyone's ever said on this show. And it only <laughs> took us like five and a half years to get there. <laughs> you know, we got there eventually. <laughs> we, we did skew very far off topic, though. Um, ah, we're talking about we're, relationships of some kind. We are. We are. Um I wanted to go back up. I was going to throw up a comment that uh, was said earlier up here. Sure. Um, speaking of sequel relationships, because uh, Finn and Rose was was one of the ones I wanted to talk about because that one. Ooh, uh, I don't know that that one didn't work for me. Hmm. Like, why did she have to come out of nowhere and like kiss him? That was another kiss out of nowhere. I was like, what? Like, stop it. Yeah. Okay. So that, that was our buddy Joe. Uh, he said Finn was the obvious choice because episode seven hinted at them being a team in the force. So that was, you know, Finn and Finn and Ray. Poe wouldn't have worked because he's a workaholic. Rose and Finn was solid. I wanted that to keep going. Um, I, yeah, I, I could see that. And th- the kiss, though. Again, I think it's in the delivery because, you know, she's alive and kisses him. Oh, I'm dead. You know, like that was kind of silly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, th- I think if they would have handled that a little bit better, it would have been totally fine and normal and it would have, you know, fit in and been cool. Um, but, yeah, I... I have to say, I really don't know why they didn't revisit that and bring that back in episode nine. Like, <laughs> Wade, <laughs> Wade Lindemann, Rose was so dumb for ramming Finn away from the death beam. I, I don't, I don't know, Wade. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think his. She one damn near sk- killed him trying to save his life. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I think that one little ski speeder wasn't exactly going to do much damage anyway. It's like <laughs> it's like the, like the the st- like the Star Wars Family Guy, the Empire Strikes Back, when Dak flies out there alone. Oh yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Like, to, to go to go at the uh, to go at the Star Destroyer. It's just one laser, poof, and it, <laughs> like it's, it does absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, he's, Wade, Wade says, or whatever that door opener. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Um Yeah. I, oh, we got a Rose fan though, rural farm boy. Yeah. He says he wants Rose to give me a kiss. I'm jealous. <laughs> if you okay, so hmm. So he said he he would take a kiss from Rose. What what Star Wars heroine would you take a kiss from first? Who would be your choice? And I know this sounds maybe misogynistic, but it's, it, 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 you know, it's just, inter- you know, I was never a Princess Leia's hot and I don't really look at it that way. So I've never actually thought about this before, ironically. So, hmm. That's a tough call. I mean, the, the most obvious answer for me is Kira. That is my answer. But I don't know. Maz is pretty experienced. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm hairy enough for her, but. <laughs> Otherwise, you're too short and not hairy enough. You can't do it. 
I mean, not Jin, not wow. Jin. I never saw her brush her teeth once, and she was sitting in an Imperial prison for so long. I, <laughs> mm, that, Jin, no. that, Jin, that Jin Urso has poor hygiene. <laughs> she always seemed oh to be in gosh. hot or very wet places, and it's just not a good combination. It's just, well, yeah, they were all probably suffering from a horrible case of swamp ass at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyways yeah there, there's another one lady like, proxima there you go that's who i want lady proxima there's a joke there but i will leave that alone i like doing it in the dark what can i say <laughs> i swear i put on a condom no you didn't you made a ripping sound with your mouth <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so, are there any weird ones on your list? Getting back to the topic at hand, you said you had a couple of weird ones, and since we're getting near the end of the show, oh yeah. Well, okay, it like okay. So the bromance thing proves that it doesn't always have to be romance. So right. let's just let's just take relationships in general. What's what's pick one of your favorite relationships in Star Wars? It could be anything. It could be Grogu with the shifter knob from the uh, Razor Crest. You know, whatever. <laughs> That that's up there. Um, that is a pretty good one, right? Yeah. Favorite relationships in Star Wars. <clears throat> like when those two uh, characters are on screen, like you just love it. See, this one doesn't count because it's not like. I mean, does it have to be a romantic thing? No, no. Is it Han and Chewie? Yes. But it's actually Luke and Yoda. And I know that's a very generic answer, but there is something like whenever they're on the screen together, it always seemed like very majestic and uplifting. And, you know, um, I loved it. I just it was always cool. Like when when Yoda when Yoda popped up in The Last Jedi, I was thrilled. I'm like, sweet, we're going to get some more Jedi knowledge thrown on us. So, I dude, that was so great. I when I, I saw that ghost from behind, I was like, "No way! Yes, it's Yoda!" Right? God, that's how you dip into fan service a little bit and do it right. Yeah, like it made sense for him to come back, and I love that he was like casual at that point. You know, it's like it's like having a conversation with your parents as an adult versus as a kid. Yeah, where like the the footing is more even, so like they can drop the superiority role a little bit and just be like a buddy yes. instead of a, a mentor. That was so great. Where Yoda's yes. just like that's like hair down Yoda right there. Yep, I love that. That was so good. Yeah, so it, good. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I I would say that like obviously Han and Chewie. Um, and again, I can't use this one, but Han and the Millennium Falcon. Sorry, but that's just. <laughs> the coolest thing in the world to me it's like eddie van halen and the frankenstrat man i don't care if i've repeated myself but uh joseph friend he's he, you know he, finn and poe that's that's his deal mm -hmm. so so that that's his go-to I, I could totally see that i i actually love when they're like kicking ass together i you know that that opening scene of uh rise of skywalker and the falcon in the ice cave is really cool so I like it is that. so so different like with that ryan johnson movie in the middle because if you take finn and poe from from Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker, absolutely. And then to split them up and have them completely apart in Last Jedi was kind of a bummer. Like it was a yeah. cool change of pace, but also a bummer because yeah, they set them up so well in Episode Seven to like have a real relationship going on there, yeah. romance or otherwise, and to, to just not do anything with it in the next movie. Because when they got back together in Nine, you're right. It's like the chemistry was back. It was great. It was like. Where where Poe names him a general is like and, and, and thank you for that. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah thank it you was for so that. good, it was yeah. so good. Um, so so how about you? Like like what what's like a relationship that you you totally love? Um, I mean Han and Chewie is a classic, right? I that's one thing I thought Solo did really well was I thought it deepened that relationship, even though we already got it. Like yeah. I love that. I love that right off the bat, like. It, I was reminded of it because the other day I was watching guardians of the galaxy and I was watching rocket and Groot and it was the same exact thing. Like you can't understand the big tall thing, but the other guy is going to translate for you and yeah. you totally bond. Like that's, 
it totally right. got, gave me like Han and Chewy vibes. And I was like, that's, that's the best right there. Right. <laughs> Wade Lindemann, DJ and the hole in his socks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's Wade fantastic. wins. That's fantastic. Wade wins right there. That's fantastic. <laughs> BB-8 oh, and man. the coins. <laughs> yeah, right. How about uh, Broom Boy and the Whip? No? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I just love it when those two come together. That's, that's so <laughs> bad, man. That's so bad. Oh, man. Uh Yeah. Yeah, so shipping in general, I don't know, like it when it works it's awesome, but it doesn't always work. Yeah. Like Like I don't like know I, any any better way to put it, but Well, like I said to start the show, it's you know, I I think it's fine if people want to do that stuff and, you know, it's awesome that's their way of getting into the fandom and everything like that. Uh, you know, get, getting, you know, more involved in the fandom, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um but just don't take it so far to where you're attacking people who aren't <laughs> aren't into your idea, you know. Uh, that's that's really my only problem with it. It's like just have a good time with it. That's what Star Wars is for, you know. It's not mm-hmm. there to beat the crap out of people with if they don't agree with you. You know, it's like it's like when people hate movies and other people enjoy. It. Well, you're stupid, and ah, oh, that movie's terrible. You're an idiot. Like, well, no, it's just you know, I I watched a movie last night that not a lot of people have heard a lot about and i absolutely loved it and i'm i'm not an idiot if other people didn't like it you know um which was it uh i was it jeez what was it yeah was it uh it was it's called why was it how was it yeah yeah (laughs) when was it (laughs) airplane what huh who (laughs) who (laughs) Um, where'd who go (laughs) <laughs> Man, we could keep this going for minutes if we wanted to. Right. Um, it's called it's called the Walk, and it's about that um, Philippe Petit guy, or I think that's how you pronounce it, the French guy that did the wire walk between the twin towers. Oh yeah, I meant to oh. see that actually. So I, I know this is off topic. We'll end the show after this real quick off topic movie review. As a movie, it's like a. I mean, it's a true story, and I looked it up, and like literally like ninety eight percent of what's in the movie is actually true. Which is pretty unbelievable when you see the movie, but it's it's you know it's it's a lighthearted thing, and you know it's an interesting story. It's it's kind of like that two hours where you watch a movie and you're not really bogged down at all. You're just kind of entertained, and you know it, it's ha- it's it makes you think, but it's happy and it's serious in parts. But it's just entertaining, you know, on kind of like a surface level. Mm-hmm. So I like that, but I damn near puked watching that in 3d vr i am not i i have a fear of heights i mean next time you come over i'll put it we'll put it in 3d for you with the glasses just that's got to be hellacious because this dude like when people when i mean because the towers weren't finished when he was doing this and when he had to sneak up there with all the equipment and when he's trying to set stuff up like uh, set stuff up people would come up like guards and he'd jump over at the side and he's hanging on to like these it's like a set of steps, and the only thing behind him is air. So it, just the whole, I mean, the whole nervousness of, oh, my God, like, what are you doing? What, mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing? And, it, 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 like, the, the, the tension is ungodly. And then when he goes out on the wire, it, it's, it's like, you know, I, I won't spoil it since you want to watch it, but. I was I was yelling at the television a few times. <laughs> like you're you're kind of thinking, get your ass off of there. <laughs> like, and mostly it's because my heart is just like, I, I mean, dude, the, the visuals are unbelievable. I mean, it, it's just staggering how good it looks. But I mean, the tension it creates is just ah, man. It's yeah, and of course, there's obviously a little bit of nostalgia because we know what happened to the towers. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, so that that's I guess we can little... actually be grateful that movie theaters were shuttered this past year because if we had gone to see that in real D three D, well, I was it was 2015, so we could have, and I wanted to, and I missed it. It actually had it in IMAX 3D because oh, of, because of oh. the visuals. Yeah, I just I picture I picture seeing that at, like in Chicago at the Navy Pier Theater, the thing that's mm-hmm. like you know 80 by 60, and I, I I don't know. Oh God, it was. 
I mean, I, dude, like I, I can't describe it. Like next time you're over, I'll, I'll put the glasses on and like not the not the VR headset. I know you're not a fan of that, but I mean, you got to see the way they did the 3D in this. I was, I mean, I, I, it was literally making me sick. All the tension and everything. You're just like, holy crud. So it was awesome. It was awesome. Man. So uh, yeah. Well, thanks again, everybody, for checking out another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. Uh, once again, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. Uh, you can get customizable Nerf Herder Council swag at shop.nerfherdercouncil.com. You get cool shirts like this one that uh, AJ made several designs. You can put it on any color shirt, any color logo, so it's fully customizable. So go check that out. Uh, we do record every other Wednesday at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are live right here on our YouTube uh, channel and our Facebook page. And eventually I'm going to get this effing pop fixed in my microphone. But I'm a technological idiot, so I'm going to need help with that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, the show is available in audio format as well. Just... Uh, Google Nerf Herder Council, man. We're all over the place, so check that out. Uh, also mm -hmm. want to shout out, uh, this coming Sunday, which will be February 7th, is uh, Star Wars Podcast Day. So if you oh, go on yeah, social yeah. media, mm -hmm. go on social media and look that up. There's, uh, I think, over 60 shows taking part in that. So uh, if you're looking for some new Star Wars content, go check it out. There are a ton of awesome shows. I know a few shows that we're friends with are taking part in that. Uh, there's some shows that I've actually done guest spots on. And there's all kinds of different perspectives on things. And I would highly recommend you go check out at least a few minutes of each of these shows because you might find something you really, really like. There are so many good shows out there. So, um, again, thanks for checking out the Nerf Herder Council. Uh, once again, I am your host, JT, at Dog Pound Jedi. He is AJ. At Drake Adams 579. And we will catch you next time. is never gonna get us past that blockade. This bucket's got a few surprises left in her. Plus, me and Chewie are on it. Ain't that right, Chewie? Hell yeah, you my nerf herder. You my nerf herder.